So the next thing I want to talk about is under operations and it's called to shape. Notice that you can press Q, you can press O, and you can press T. Allow me to introduce you to QOT, one of my favorite hotkeys in hard ops. By pressing QOT, you can convert basically any selection into a shape, whether you want that shape to be a cube, whether you want it to be a plane, a cylinder, a sphere, or even empties. And there's a myriad of options to choose how you deal with the parenting, whether you accept the first bevel of it, whether it's equalized, or if it's for each individual shape. A lot of work has gone into this version of two shape, which I've basically referred to as the mechanical version of shape with a more interactive version to come in the future. However, at this time, the newest addition to it is convex hull and decap, which are able to turn any mesh into a shape of itself. So this could seem like a lot to take in. What does two shape do? What is it used for? So I'm just going to delete everything. We're just going to shift a add a cube and we're just going to grab these two edges in edit mode and bevel them with control B and grab these two edges and bevel them. I mean, this isn't how I work, but sometimes I do and we'll just tab into edit mode and move the shape up and we'll just use mirror and press X to reset it and we'll just mirror it below right click to cancel and here we are with this shape right let's say I want to put a box around I would press Q O T let's say I wanted this shape to be accurate around it I would try something like convex hull which will give me a more accurate shape and then I could just scale this down and then you know we talked about basically materials right with the alt m so i would come in here and shift click blank material to add a glass material but we want another box right so i'll press qot again and we'll do convex hole again but this time i'll press s shift z and just scale this on the inside and then press q and sharpen and select this q and sharpen and now we've just created this very basic shape so continuing on i could just um you know shift a add a cube here and we'll just um, perform a difference cut that's just, you know, first I'll hide the glass so you can see everything. And we'll just perform a difference and everything's fine and dandy. We're gonna C sharp it to apply it, but I'm gonna select this face and this face. And the thing about QOT, the thing about QOT is it even works in edit mode, so QOT. And now we have a shape inside of this, even though it looks like a slice, but I don't want it to be a convex hole mesh. I don't, I don't want that. I actually want it to be a cylinder, but with the cylinder, I actually want it to be equalized and I want the radius to be equalized. And so we can lower down the um, diameter of the first one and then just control C, control V, copy that. And now we've basically inserted the cylinder in here very easily. So we could just Alt X, mirror this to the other side, select this shape, select this shape, mirror it across itself using two mirror right click to get out of that select this shape hit it with the sharpen select this shape hit it with a way to normal just to get that shading back on track and we can just keep working so i'm going to go back into edit mode and we're going to press qot and this time we're going to just convert this into a box but we want to convert it into a individual box let's see we want to turn off equalize and we are good to go. So now we have this box that we can work with. However, it looks like we uh, got the mirrored side in the end anyways, because I forgot to uncheck that and double check it. So we'll just perform a difference and then we'll hit it with a solidify in order to just get like a nice inset lip going around it. And then we can just shift a add a cube and scale this up and select both of these and just do a difference maybe scale this move it around and just like that we can create a very quick shape just using two shape when it comes to that with hard up so it became a mainstay very quickly and a lot of work has went into expanding it there's also additional things that can be done with it um, that i'm a big fan of like for example we can select this whole shape right and i can press qot and now it's been turned into a box but we can choose parent shape to selection inverse and so now everything is actually parented to this box so if we were to convert this box to a wire via shade wire then we actually can move this around but it's not working out you know so let's select this thing and we will just choose late parent actually we don't have the right selection this shape will activate late parent so now we can late parent this 
and now we can rotate this and move it willy-nilly turn this into an insert but just like that we can just create a bounding box just surrounding this thing on the fly so you know if i were talking about kit ops in this video i would talk about how i could press qot to just create a convex hole mesh around this that i can then you know expand this face on and convert into a wire actually not that one we want to convert it to a wire and use this to just basically add on to surfaces. So there's so much potential that's able to be used with this. And I'm really only scratching the surface with this because I want to keep each of these uh, segments slightly brief. But another way to also get the most out of it is using something called decap, which a lot of work has went into and is also a very recent addition. When it comes to decap, it's a different type of separation mode uh, or type of two mesh mode. So we have this box, right? And you know, maybe I want to move this shape over. And we let's say we wanted to turn this into a curved mesh, like a mesh that's able to be repeated and curved. But we also want caps on it. So we press Q O T and we bring up, you know, two mesh. But this time we change it to decap, which will actually turn this into a decapitated type mesh. But we'll choose to hide original so we see what's going on. So we don't want to decap it on the Z. We actually want to decap it on the X where we can adjust our thickness. Actually, we want to decap it on the Y. And we want to choose it enough that it has an equal looking side on both the X and the Y. And we can choose whether we fill these holes or not. And we can also choose if we want to keep these caps. The cool thing about this is we can also choose if we want them to be array compatible. Notice that when I click this, the origins get modified so that this is more compatible with the array modifier in its current state, which seems a little strange to me. So we'll just bring in a Bezier circle and I'm just tabbing into edit mode and scaling it up. So we'll just take our array and we'll press X to change axis and we'll press one to set it to one and we'll just roll this out and that's good and all. So we'll select that and the curve and press control P to curve deform it. And we look at this and it didn't work out. So we need to press control tilde to go in the helper. And from here, we can just control roll over the axis to find the right axis. So now we have this array set up. One of the small nuances of hops and basically Python tools in general is that we don't have access to the eyedropper. Uh, it just gets weird, but I am able to go in here and choose my posit my negative cap and my positive cap, which now has resulted in me being able to create a fully manifold arrayable mesh that's able to deform along this curve. So, you know, we'll scale this down a little bit so it can really be seen. And we see that, you know, it's not really handling the resolution of the curve that much. So to jump ahead and just show the point, I will just put a dice on it and we will dice it this way and now we actually have a better resolution. But whenever it comes to deforming things on a curve, you also want to ensure that your curves resolution is set up high. So I like to set it to something like 128. And then whenever I am messing with the curve, it actually gives a very nice smooth result. But it is very nice to be able to decap something, extend it out along an array and be able to give it proper front and end caps.